out of the closet. Yeah, I think that's dry in there now. What? Nothing. <gasps> oh, Lorks, Medado. <sighs> <laughs> Environmental agencies say it could be one of the worst disasters in recent years as forest fires continue to sweep through Borneo. They say an area the size of Wales has been destroyed. And, you see, now, why do I have to say that? Eh? Why Wales? Hmm? It's always an area the size of Wales, isn't it? I, I mean, how do you think that makes me feel, having to say that, having to imagine three or four times a year sometimes that Wales, my country, has been destroyed? Hmm? I mean, why can't I say an area the size of Yorkshire? It's because they think if I say an area the size of Wales, you won't be so bothered, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's only Wales. Well, I've had enough of it. All right, from now on, when I'm on, it's going to be an area the size of Belgium. All right? <laughs> I'm just telling you that now to avoid any confusion, all right? <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Who's this? I'm Jerry Hall. It's Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall is very tall. How tall are you, Jerry Hall? Oh, I'm very tall. Jerry Hall is very tall, and she speaks with a Texan drawl. But I have no particular talent at all. <laughs> no particular talent at all? Well, apart from being very tall. You earn a living from being tall? <laughs> what gall? Bye-bye, Jerry Hall. Bye-bye. I've had a ball. Off you go. <laughs> to do bog all. <laughs> Sir Rupert Buckingham Burr and his wife were entertaining friends. The evening began like any ordinary, lavish Victorian dinner party in a big house. <laughs> The arrival of cheese and biscuits signalled a dramatic turn for the worse. Suddenly, disaster struck. Sir Rupert Buckingham <coughs> Burr started to choke. <coughs> I remember it distinctly. I remember thinking, I'm starting to choke. Somebody suggested calling the emergency services. Couldn't somebody call the emergency services? Yeah. Well, then I remembered that the emergency services hadn't been invented. The situation looked bad. Luckily, though, one of the guests was a certain Mr Heimlich. Thinking quickly, he grabbed hold of a napkin, took out a pen and started to sketch out an idea <coughs> for a revolving restaurant. <laughs> pointed out that although this was a good idea, it probably wouldn't help in this situation. Heimlich found himself back at the drawing napkin. He started to sketch out another idea for a manoeuvre designed to dislodge food trapped in a person's neck. The time had come for Heimlich to put his manoeuvre to the test. He grabbed hold of Buckingham Burr, applied a short burst of pressure to his stomach area and forced the trapped food free. If it hadn't been for Heimlich's knowledge of the Heimlich manoeuvre, it could all have been much, much worse. As it was, Lady Jocelyn Dent nearly lost an eye, and Sir Rupert Buckingham Burr very nearly died, but didn't. Damn him. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, hello. Welcome back. Now, coming up, we'll be talking to some of the stars of Casualty. So, uh, you'll be looking forward to that, won't you? Oh, yeah. I love Casualty. Yeah, I know. That's, that's why I said it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, tell you what, do you remember recently we had that man on here talking about um, old Victorian operating theatres? Do you remember that? Operating theatres? Yeah, because the Victorians used to do the operations in public, didn't they? Did they? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it, was, it was like a theatre. That's why they're called operating theatres. Oh. Yeah. But I was thinking, right, NHS, yeah, hmm. short of money, aren't they? Oh, yeah. 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 But loads of people, like you, like yeah. watching all these, you know, hospital yeah. drama things, yeah, yeah, yeah. can't get enough yeah. of them. So what I thought, right, mm. why didn't the NHS start performing operations in public, right, like the Victorians did? Oh, oh, and what would be the point of that? Well, loads of people come to watch the operations, right? NHS charges them and they get mm. a shed load of money. That'll keep the nurses happy, surely. <laughs> right, that's the NHS sorted. Now, um, <laughs> 
if you're a nurse watching at home, actually, yeah, this is a good point, actually. If you're a nurse, why don't you give us a call? Let us know what you think of that idea. If you can afford the phone call, obviously. Right, OK. <laughs> Back in a minute. Back in a minute. Well, we've been looking forward to it all week, but ultimately, what a disappointment. Mark, surely that has to be one of the worst 90 minutes ever witnessed, wouldn't you think? Nonsense, Gary. Why upset yourself? It's only a game. <laughs> hey, look on the bright side. We're still here. The sun shines brightly. You know, that the birds are singing and the trees are laughing gaily at the dancing flowers at their feet. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you? I think I, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, come on, Mark. Where's the frowning, moaning, saggy eyed misery guts that we, uh, we've grown to love? <laughs> hey, there's no point in being morose, is there? Hey, just because we've only got a few weeks left on Match of the Day? Hey, just because in a few weeks' time we'll be unemployed thanks to one of the greatest injustices of television sport in history? Come on. I just say we should carry on and do the job as best we can. <laughs> Transforming the most turgid pile of cliched floral banality into a, a vibrant and evocative living space with a character and a concept and a fudge of a lot of gold leaf. <laughs> it's pretty difficult, you know, but hey ho, we do it, we cope. <laughs> but if somebody asked me to spend two days as a plain clothed police officer, I don't think I could do that. I mean, plain clothes? Come on! <laughs> David, I want a divorce. What? I want a divorce. Manchester City, Princess, why? Because I've realised that there's something vitally important missing in our marriage. What? A pre-nuptial agreement. Well, what do you want an M for? Well, Catherine and Michael have got one. Princess, why do we always have to keep up with the Zeta Joneses? Because if we're not <laughs> careful, they will take over as the world's premier celebrity couple. Mm, good. Anyway, it's not just that. If we ever wanted to get separated, we'd need a prenuptial agreement, so we have to get divorced so we can get one. Would I have to go and live with Gary Neville for a bit? Nice. No, oh, because we get remarried as soon as we get it, you see. But I thought we only needed a prenuptial if one person was really rich and successful and they're worried that the other one's going to bleed them dry when their own career turns out to be, you know, short-lived and that. Exactly, David. I'm mm. thinking of you. <laughs> Football's not going to last forever, you know. Yes, love? Yes, Deaton. Be a good fag, would you, and pass me that book? It's ever so slightly out of my reach. Oh, Deaton, I have to say, I object to being treated like this. Just shut up and do it, Hislop. Good idea, Deaton. <laughs> and I think you'll find it's time for the snack, which, for obvious reasons, I like to call my snack. And after that, make yourself scarce, I have a girl coming to see me. A girl? Yes, you probably haven't come across girls, have you? <laughs> Only in magazines. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> so one day, hey, one day I'm sure you'll blossom from the ugly duckling I see before me into a rather ugly swan. Ah, oh, Deaton. <laughs> Do you know, I think it is funnier with the beard and the glasses. It, uh, it takes it away from being just me, you see. <laughs> You're probably not even sure who I am, are you? <laughs> I think the missing words in this case are Reese and Jones. Uh, oh, right, yes. <laughs> It'll never work as a character. I think you'll just irritate people. No one at this school cares what you think, Hislop. <laughs> Is the right answer. <laughs> Hello and good morning. <laughs> now, for many people, you and I, my wife, your wife, most people that I know, we think nothing of going out of the house. It's part of our daily lives, our daily routine. It's one of our rights if you like. So how does it feel? 
if you can't go out of your house? How do you feel if you feel that going out of your house has become impossible? <laughs> Not your physical disability, but your psychological disability. <laughs> There's no bars in the doors, there aren't any bars in the windows, but there are bars in front of your eyes, bars in your mind, bars on your ability to walk out of your house and say hello. It's me. I live there. Agoraphobia. It's a terrible illness. Now, Dorian, a similar thing happened to you. <laughs> I knew this was never going to blooming work. I knew it. Here, Steve. Have you had a word with Mel about Phil? Oh, sorry, Peggy. I've been too busy having a word with Beppe about Barry. Well, well, you can't go having a word with Beppe about Barry, cos that'll mean Barry will have a word with Roy. <laughs> That'll be Phil. I better go and have a word. Steve, can I have a word? Yeah, of course, darling. There's uh, Mark. Um... Yeah, he had a word with me about Martin, so I know everything, Steve. Uh, so you know I had a word with Mark and Martin about Sonia and Jane? Only cos I'd had a word with Dot about Nick having a word with Mark. <laughs> oh, why were you having a word with Dot? Because she wouldn't have a word with Nick about him having a word with Ashley, Beppe, Sandra, Terry, Barry, Roy, Ian, Laura, Cat, Molin and Charlie. Well, if Dot hasn't had a word with Nick about him having a word with, uh, all them lot, then, uh, I better have a word with Steve. But you are Steve. <laughs> God save the Queen. Welcome, one and all, to Ready, Steady, Cook. Oh, I love Ainsley. I wish he'd come and Ready, Steady, Cook for me. Hiya. <laughs> oh, look out, it's the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> Anyone in there? Oh, yeah. Hey, we saw our Andrew with his new girlfriend, yeah, didn't we? No, yeah, we did. Ooh, yeah. What's she like? Well, she's all right, man, but she's a proletarian. Yeah. What? You mean she doesn't eat meat? No, a proletarian. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Charles, what is that? Working class. It's a shame for her, isn't it? Working class? Anyway, he said he might bring her round later. We can't be bothering with proletarians. <laughs> so, Charles, mm -hmm. is a proletarian the same as a plebeian? No. A plebeian is a lady who likes other ladies. <laughs> It may just have been an allergic reaction or simply a piece of dust tickling the vellus hairs lining the inside of her nostril. But the people of Italy were shocked today when the Queen sneezed during a royal visit. Over now to our royal correspondent, Jenny Bond. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Hugh. Jenny, what exactly happened? Well, yes, Hugh, it was during a royal walkabout. The Queen was given some flowers and shortly afterwards she sneezed. She had been given other flowers and not sneezed. So the big question is, did she react to one flower in particular or was the sneeze brought on by something else? Now, how worried are the royal party? Well, Hugh, it could be hay fever, or there has been much talk lately uh, about the corgis, who have also been observed sneezing. It could have been something she picked up from them. Jenny, I know it's probably too early to say, but did anything come out? Well, uh, the Queen did raise her hand uh, to her face, as you would expect her to do. Uh, but yes, I'm afraid a small bullet of royal mucus did shoot through her glove digits. And did it land on anybody? Fortunately, Hugh, it landed on me. That's me, Hugh, not you, Hugh. <laughs> Jenny Bond, thank you very much. <laughs> There's only one way for us to keep up with the city changes, David. What's that? We're going to have to have acting lessons. What? Yeah, starting today. But I was going to go and meet Roy Keane, go down the arcades. Well, now, you've got a higher purpose. <laughs> Actor, eh? 
Yeah. You could be the next Vinnie Jones. <laughs> He's got a new film out, you know, Vinnie Jones. Has he? Yeah, for kids. Vinnie the Pooh. <laughs> Vinnie the Pooh. <laughs> Actor David, not comedian. <laughs> All right, so mild team there, Leicester. Not exactly setting the world alight up front. Mark, do you think they need another striker? I'm not really bothered, though. Just not really bothered. Yeah. Sorry. Have you never thought to meditate upon more spiritual matters, Gary? <laughs> bit busy just now, Mark. These <laughs> earthly concerns are but chains upon the soul. Right. Yeah. So you don't think... Peter Taylor maybe needs to make some changes for next season. Change is essential, Gary. Well, yeah, I mean, personally, I'd bring in the kids who... For change feeds love. Right. <laughs> Where would you get the Sergeant Pepper stuff? Think not upon outward appearance, Gary, but instead meditate upon the inner truth. Yeah, the, the third goal. I mean, Sunderland's defending was... Well, it was all over the place, really, wasn't it? I mean, maybe they also need to dip into the transfer market. Um... 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 <laughs> Not like you to be stuck for an answer, Mark. Not um, Gary. Um. The sacred Hindu mantra. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Well, you don't think the Premiership needs any more foreign imports, surely? I'm not listening to you, Gary. Hey. My calling is now to follow the path that leads to the enlightened state. Right. Thanks, Mark. Maharishi, Mark. You're starting to scare me. <laughs> well, it's been, uh, Well, it's been fascinating talking to you, Cher. It, it, it really has. Why, thank you. No, not so. <laughs> so, uh, just before we, uh, just before we, um... What, Michael, what, Michael? <laughs> what do you mean, uh, What do you mean, what, Michael, what, Michael? You know, I just love the way that you start all your sentences twice. Oh, I don't think I, uh, I, I, I don't think I do. You've been doing it all night. Oh, I, I'm sure I, uh, I, I'm sure I have. You see, you've just done it again. Well, well, anyway, anyway, uh, <laughs> what are you, uh, <laughs> what are you, what are you going to sing for us tonight? OK, I'm going to sing New York, New York. OK, New York, New York, New York, New York, ladies and gentlemen, share. No. It's not New York, New York, New York, New York. It's just New York, New York. Right, New York, New York. New York, New York, ladies and gentlemen, with Cher. See, you've just done it again. Are you sure? Yes. You said New York, New York, New York, New York. It is just New no, York, I, I never, I New never York. said that. Yes, you did. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't. <laughs> okay, never mind. I won't do New York, New York. I'll do a song better suited to you and your little problem. Alright, alright. <clears throat> da do run run. Da do run run run. Da do run run run. That's it. Got it in two. This is this is German. Share. <laughs> the really good thing about these programmes uh, was that they gave you the chance to be on TV uh, without really needing to be good at anything, uh, except talking, um, you know, which was really good for me, obviously. Basically, you just talked about five things, which were puberty, pop music, adverts, fashion and sweets. And then all you had to say was, did we really do that? Did we really do that? Did we really do that? <laughs> because we were famous, it was much more interesting listening to us rather than a member of the public, which would have been horrid. It was so simple, really. I mean, all you had to do was say on the buses or mind your language. People loved it. And there was always this woman who was on, like, all of them. Oh, she was on all of them. What was her name? Arabella Weir. Arabella Weir. Arabella Weir! <laughs> I remember there was always some bloke on from the north <laughs> that hardly anybody knew. The expression money for old ropes brings to mind. But then so the images of a nubile young Romanian gymnast wearing nothing but a pair of slim pants and a... But let's face it, people will always watch them because they love nostalgia. Ah, now, now and again, you see, they'd have somebody on there who'd actually be more than three years old at the time. You know, but not often, because they were normally a little bit older, a little bit bolder, a bit more frightening, you see, a little bit bitter, 
about all these young people taking my jobs, do you see? Oh, oh that's... <laughs> and we'll always go on them because we love being on TV. I'll do anything. Anything. <laughs> Me too. And hey, me. <laughs> Welcome back. Nice to talk to Tony Robinson there, wasn't it? Yeah, he's got yeah. he's got such a lovely voice, hasn't he? Yeah, he? he's got a lovely voice. Mm, yeah, very lovely. um, very well, very yeah. sexy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sexy. Yeah. I wanted to ask him about all those um history programmes he does. Well, why didn't you? We had ten minutes with him. Because <laughs> um, that's all he seems to do now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very true. Very true. Yeah, any yeah. history program, Tony Robinson will normally uh, present it or narrate it or something. Yeah. I think it's just really because he did Blackadder, isn't it? Oh, I used yeah. to love Blackadder. Oh, it was very good. Swear, but he was yeah. very good. He, he that, was. Wasn't he was very good. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yes, but it's true that. Yeah, yeah. All he does now is spend his time with lots of badly dressed mm -hmm. archaeologists from Bristol who can't pronounce their arse properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a shame. But, but why is that? Why, why is it that uh, you know if you can't yeah. pronounce your arse properly, it seems like you either become an archaeologist or Jonathan Ross? No, why is that? No. Yeah. Tell you what, give us a call. Give us a call if you know that. <laughs> Especially if you, if you are an archaeologist, give us a well, give us a give us a wing. Give us a wing. Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Barrymore, that's another one. Yeah. Is he? He's not an archaeologist. No, he's, is he? he's a presenter, isn't he? Is yeah. He? Just be quiet. Oh. <laughs> Deaton. Yes, his love. What are breasts like? So you've never had your hand down a girl's blouse, then, his love? No, not yet. Come close a few times. Really? How close? I sat next to some on the bus once. Mm, I'm not sure that really counts. Anyway, it's a very pleasant experience, let me tell you. Rather like putting your hand between the warm heads of two sleeping kittens. <laughs> really? Yes. And there are all sorts of different shapes, sizes, tastes. Tastes? Good Lord, you don't mean that you've... Mm, yes, I have been known to run my questing tongue around the darkly glowing rim of the odd nipple. But you're not a cabinet minister. <laughs> we all do it, Hislop. Except you, obviously. And Cliff Richard. Allegedly. What? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, have you uh, whitened my tennis shoes for tomorrow? Merton's doing them. Merton? New caretaker's son. Oh, the strange one from room, um... 101. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, God knows how they'll turn out. Ah, Deaton. Ah, Atkinson, yes? I was wondering if you'd like a lift down to the drama club. <laughs> Well, it's only 50 yards. I think I'm quite capable of walking, thank you. I could do with the lift. I've got to take Deaton's sheets down to the laundry, and they are rather heavy. Hislop, the chances of me giving you a lift are about as high as the ankle socks on a particularly small beetle who's standing in a ditch, in a quarry, in the low countries. <laughs> I'll take that as a no, then, shall I? Is the right answer. <laughs> Acting in The Graduate in London's West End was so much fun. I had a ball. But it was hard work night after night after night. But if someone asked me to go out on the streets and arrest someone for, like, acting suspiciously, <laughs> then in all honesty, I don't think I could do that. No. <laughs> Well, shiver me ears and plump me vitals. It isn't Uncle Tell. Pixelating his elfin way onto your idiot lamp once more. Ahoy there, me hearties. Well, I'd love to get on with the show, but I can't. Why not, I hear them cry? Well, because I'm waiting for Gabby. Yeah. Oh, Gabby Roslin. Yeah. Didn't I wait for her here yesterday? Or was that Sue Cook? Well... I wish she'd come, dear viewer. Oh, yes, because I can't tell what it is I'm meant to be doing anymore. No. She'll in need. Eurovision? Points of view. I can't tell one from t'other no more. Bratislava, what say ye? Pudsy bear, no point. Ah, it's all tactical voting. Eh? <laughs> Slovakians never vote for cuddly toys, you know. No. Ah, where's that Gabby? She said she'd come today. Saturday, she said. But is it Saturday? Eh? Ah, well, what now, eh? Perchance it's time to dust off more of Auntie's bloomers 
or Auntie's sporting bloomers, or Auntie's festive bloomers. How many bloomers does that old trout have? <laughs> ah, well, nothing to be done, I fear, but wait. And what is life but one long, soul-numbing piece of tedium? A bit like the Ken Bruce radio show, but with less Roy Orbison. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> uh, where's that Gabby? Is this the place? By the tree, she said. By the tree, by the tree, by the beautiful tree. <sighs> she said she'd come today. Yeah, she said she'd come today, but by golly, bosun, she hasn't. Huh? Dame time beaten us again, has she? Ah, well, join us next time, I urge you, for the next Needy Auntie's Song Contest of You. <laughs> you know, I had the queer feeling that none of this makes any sense anymore. So, uh, Liverpool's still struggling to find their best formation. Uh, Mark, what do you think they... <laughs> yeah. Have you gone? I'm in here, Gary. <laughs> Why? My drama is so advanced that I have separated from my earthly form and attained a state of consciousness inconceivable to the materially enslaved. Come again. <laughs> you look upon my face. You may dissolve, Gary. Right, so, um, do you think Liverpool should go with a three at the back, then? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> hey, Gary, I'm going. Hey, without match of the day, your life is worthless, whereas mine <laughs> will flourish in nirvana. <laughs> oh, well, here are the round for the rest of the day's premiership action. It's your Sinstat. Oh, hello, son. How'd you get on at the job centre? Not bad. Ma. <laughs> Two words, <laughs> three purses, and a handbag. <laughs> oh, Dick, you thief little bleeder. I don't believe it. My own flesh and blood. You'd sell your own grandmother for a fiver. Rubbish! You know very well I've got a tenner for her. <laughs> <laughs> Annoying the goods of thy neighbours, and ye shall suffer eternal torment. Leviticus chapter 3, verse 8. Shut your gob, you emaciated old goat. Nick Cotton, chapter 2. <laughs> da! Here. Where are you going? Out. Jim's taking me up west to a nice little Italian. Yeah, dutty little woman. Dutty, 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 dutty. But, Ma, you ain't got no money. Yes, I have. You ain't now. <laughs> oh, Nick, Nick, how can you do this to your own mother? Oh, oh, me art, me art, oh. Oh, my God, not your art again. You was given three years to live in 1938. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait till you snap it. Anyway, I, 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 I have been out there all day, slaving away. Uh, you've got to make my dinner. I can't. There ain't nothing in the fridge. Ah, well, there you are. Six prime chops. Oh, you're a good one at art, ain't you? Oh, I'll put them on at once. I'll even do one for the horse, eh? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't do that if I was you. <laughs> Why not? Uh, that is the horse. <laughs> Hercules! Oh, right, you little bleeder. How can you do that to the oar? Oh, no, Nick, no! Here he is! Take it away! Here you go, Paul. What a jump! <laughs> 